Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I got a neat video for you guys today. It's going to be kind of a quick one. Uh, I apologize for my voice. I'm a little under the weather. But we got work to do in the shop, and it doesn't care whether, uh, whether I feel good or not. So I want to share with you what I'm doing because I think it's you know kind of neat. Um, it's a little different, and it's something that I'm sure a lot of you guys run into, you know, being home shop. You know, you run into a lot of little one-off projects, and I'm just going to share one of those with you guys today. Plus, I also want to share some viewer mail that was sent in, and some of those items are pretty neat, and I think you'll want to see them, so let's get started. Alright guys, now here's the job that we got to do, and this is a set of rollers, and these rollers come off of the bed of a wood planer and they basically set directly under the rotating cutting head and really you know determine the, the thickness of the wood well these particular rollers were worn more on one side than the other now this is a set of bushings that come out of this roller and both of these rollers suffer from exactly the same you know wear and that they were wore a lot more on one side than the other and what that did is that resulted in a board that was you know, thicker on one side than it was on the other. And we need to replace these bushings. And we're going to make them out of brass. That may not be the best idea, but it's what we have, so it's what we're going to use. I've got a wood planer. It doesn't take rollers like this, but let's go look at it, and I'll give you a better understanding of what these actually do. All right, I apologize for the lighting in here, but... Uh, Here's the bed of the planer. Now this is a totally different model planer than, uh, than what uh, you know these rollers go on. But these rollers basically take the, pl the place of this fixed bed. Now this fixed bed is parallel with the you know cutter head that rotates in the top of this machine. And you can imagine if this bed was tilted, when you run a board through here, you know it's going to be cut more on one side than on the other. You know, it'll be going through at, a, at an angle. So that's why we're trying to avoid, you know, or that's why we're trying to, to repair these rollers so we can get back the accuracy of this old planer. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but they are extremely worn and we're gonna make some new bushings for them. All right, so our bearings, or bushings, whatever you want to call them, are the OD, and these just press in to this roller. Uh, the O's, the outside dimension is this metric because this is a, I think it's a Makita, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a Japanese-made uh, machine. So. The outside diameter of this bushing is 22.4 millimeter, or uh, basically, you know, 0.882. And the ID, or the shaft diameter, is 0.393, or 10 millimeter. So that's the plan. We're going to make a couple bushings just like these, except non warm. And we're going to make them out of brass because brass is what we have. Uh, I'd like to use like a, you know, synth of bronze or something, but we don't have that. And this is not a production piece of equipment anyway. This is much softer than the, you know, the actual rod that goes through the center. And, you know, that's what, I, I don't know what material these are, but they look like some sort of bearing material. And, uh, you know, they're just sacrificial. These are supposed to wear, you know, before the shaft. And the shaft has a little wear on it, but it's really, you know, minor. So let's get this thing in the lathe and see if we can make some bushings out of it. All right, we need to turn this down to about, what, 0.8? Eight two, and we're about one point one point one inches right now. So little ways to go.
and we're going to drill it 3 8 because we don't have a 10 millimeter uh, drill or reamer. So we're going to drill it 3 8 then we're going to come back, bore it, and then part it off. Now that uh, 3 8 uh, drill bit was a little dull, but that was kind of on purpose. This brass is grabby. So we're at 381. Yeah. Yeah. 381.381. And we need to go, we need to give a couple thousands of clearance probably. So we'll go to 39, you know, 3, 394. We're just going to touch off in here and clean this up from the drill marks and then we'll come in and measure it again to see where we really need to go. is right on the edge of the end too tight. And it's almost a perfect fit. Yeah. I think by the time we deburr it and I think it'll be good. we just made and I took them over to the grinder and just put a light bevel on uh, one side of each one that way they start good inside of this tube and this press happens to have a hole right in the center of the top plate so I'm going to use this to get this started properly set a bushing on top run my rod through I'm gonna get, then I'm going to get it stuck. <laughs> Probably should have tried this first. All right, take two. Now, we'll get it. And I'm just going to... Hopefully there's enough room. I'm going to have to raise this guy up just here. That's one bad thing about a press like this is, you know, it's really slow to adjust. 
but it's better than no press at all. That's for sure. It's pretty strong, uh, up to 24,000 pounds, so, you know, not, not bad. All right, so this rod will just help guide them all in. Keep them lined up anyway. All right. I think we're good. We just want to be straight. And I hope they start straight. They should. Check this. Let me bring you in. Get you in on one anyway. Start pressing. Yep, and they're both going really together. There we go. Yeah, not so bad. And that hole in the top of the press allows that rod just to, you know, continue on out. Okay. We bottomed out. Alright guys, I've got an interesting situation here. At least I've put myself in this situation simply to, to, to demonstrate something that I've used in the past that's really helped me out. But only a few times, but it's still a good trick to have in your tool steel box. And that is a way to, to part this off. Now there's a million different ways you could... You see, i got my little scribed line in my blue. I want to separate this piece from the part that I'm holding in the chuck. And of course there's a million different ways you could do this. You know, if if you didn't if you didn't care about this material here, you could simply flip this around in the chuck and turn off all this excess. You could cut it in the saw. Like I said, a lot of different reasons uh, or ways you can do this. But I've got a pretty neat way that I think that some of you will find interesting. And if nothing else, it's a good uh, cutter to have in your tool steel arsenal. So let's go over to the bench and I'll show you the tool I'm going to use and then we'll try to use it. All right, here's the cutter we're going to use, and I think this is a pretty good uh, tool to have in your uh, in your toolbox. Now I just ground this out of a piece of half inch, uh, just cheap tool steel, um, the soft stuff. That way it was quick to grind, but that way we can come in from the front, reach back in there, and part off our uh, bushing without much trouble. Now, this has come in handy for me several times. Like if I had to go into a uh, into a hole and make an O-ring groove, or if I had to, you know, part off a piece that was up inside of a hole, out of some, you know, exotic material at work that I didn't want to, uh, you know, waste. You know, and this tool is not my idea. You know, uh, when it comes to tool steel, nothing's, there's no new grinds, I don't think. If you can imagine it, it's been ground. Uh, this was a piece of tool steel that was in my, it was in a lot that I bought. And uh, when I seen this, I was like, oh man, that's a, that's a great idea. And, uh, and I've used it a few times. Uh, not necessarily this piece, but uh, but this grind. And, uh, you know, I've even used it in situations where uh, I've ground the cutters out of stainless steel if I was cutting something like a PTFE or or a Delrin or something on the uh, on the lathe and I needed something to grind real fast you know you can use just regular old steel sometimes on uh, on really soft stuff but 
there you go let's take this thing over to the lathe hook it up or install it and see if we can part this piece off all right you can see we're right up against that chuck basically and this is just a good way you know sometimes your tool holder even gets in the way of coming in and uh, this is just a way around that plus you can part off like I said up in a cylinder or set an o-ring groove and let's hope that this comes off good and uh, cooperates so let's give it a shot <laughs> be parting by hand, kind of going slow. They're feeding by hand. Well, this one turned out really well. You know, we got uh, real good results on it. Nice fit. I mean, you know, just enough slop to in there to to get a film of oil. And we went from that to, you know, from this to that, and uh, put this roller back in service. Now I got to make another one, of course. I got to make the bushings for this one. I'll do that off camera. No, no reason to do the same thing twice. Let's look at some of the stuff that a couple of viewers sent in. All right, <clears throat> here's item number one. And out of these three items that I'm going to show you guys, uh, two of these uh, individuals that sent this in, they just wanted to remain anonymous and uh, haven't talked to the third individual. So I'm just going to, you know, not mention any names, but I just want to say thank you up front and that I really, really appreciate it. And item number one, is some tool steel. Most of it's 3 8 and then we got some 5 16 um, These are carbide, brazed carbide, and a lot of these brazed carbide are new, and a few of them are used and just need touched up. But this 3 8 and 5 16 tool steel here, all of it, of course, has been used. All of it has really neat and uh, unique grinds on it that I literally spent, you know, two hours you know, going over these and looking at the grinds and contemplating what they were used for and, and whatnot. And the person that ground these, I think, did a pretty good job. They're everything from extremely small little boring bars, you know, to really super thin, you know, part offs or parting tools. And most of these just need touched up. Some of them are pretty short. But uh, if I use them in the shaper with a holder, you know, I'll be able to use these for quite a long time. Now, this 5 16 tool steel, I, I had very little 5 16 tool steel. And I still do. This is basically all I've got, uh, other than a couple pieces. And, you know, it is also extremely nice. You know, name brand stuff. Um, also, the carbide, braised carbide, really nice stuff. So I really, really appreciate it, and I want to thank the viewer that sent these in. All right, now item number two is some number four Morse tapered drills, and more number four is what the tailstock is on. <clears throat> excuse me, my big lathe, and I can accept anything down to a one, 
um, I have a quick change uh, chuck that'll you know take different adapters so I'm really happy to get these and I was a little confused at first I don't have any experience with these three fluted drills now I did get two standard you know two flute uh, drills but uh, these have to have a hole existing in order to use them and from what I read these are called core bits and they're used to enlarge existing holes in casting uh, just to speed up the manufacturing process because a bore, boring is a slower operation than drilling uh, if you want to remove metal quickly drilling is the way to go and from what I read uh, you can run these faster than you can run a standard two flute uh, drill because of the extra cutting edge so I was really happy to get these they're in really good shape they just need a little cleaning up but I don't think they've ever been used if, uh, to be honest um, we've got one that is a 13 16 all the way up to a 1 and 15 16 in the core bits and then 1 and 1 16 to 1 and 3 16 so really happy to get these I had no large drills nothing of this size so this will really speed up the process when I need to make a large hole. So I really appreciate it and I can't wait to use them. <clears throat> Alright, the third and final item. Some insert tooling. Now this is one that you've seen me use and I've already had this one. This is the one the viewer sent in and it fits my lathe perfectly um, in order to use this one I had to do some machining on the shaper to get it to the right height but this one happens to be perfect. This is a DNMG. Um, these are really nice inserts. They have four cutting edges per insert. So, you, so you, you know, a lot of them just have two, but these happen to have four. Sent me a, a variety of different uh, nose profiles and coatings here, and I uh, can't wait to use them and, and really get research them and uh, see what they're designed for. I don't know a lot about insert tooling. I happen to you know, use high-speed steel most of the time simply because my lathe runs pretty slow and uh, given the budget of the home shop, uh, you know, it's just convenient. But I really appreciate this and I can't wait to use it. Uh, you know, it's perfect. Alright, <clears throat> now here is an item that I did not get from a viewer. This was actually a flea market find and it is a big 8 inch Cincinnati clamp. Now I had to buy this thing. You know it's the same brand as my big shaper and I just love the look of it. I love good clamps. If there's one thing that I hate and that is flimsy clamps. This clamp was extremely rusted and uh, really took you know a couple hours to get back in shape and paint it and it's not bent at all and I think that has a lot to do with the lack of leverage back here uh, a lot of people tend to crank down on these things uh, far too much and they bend them but when I find a good one somewhere I buy it clamps is something that I don't think you can have too much too many of and good ones especially um, cheap clamps I'll throw them in the trash but these good things and I'll hold on these to these forever. So that was a great find and uh, really, really got me uh, excited. Uh, 8 inch standard clamp number 54 or 540-8 tested Cincinnati Tool Company. Um, I was really happy with that. That's been a couple weeks ago but I figured I'd share that with you. Well guys I apologize for the short video, but it's been one of those weeks. I really appreciate you watching. I really want to thank the guys who sent in the items. I really, really like the clamp, and I'm glad I got to share that with you. For those of you who are on Instagram and would like to follow me, it's at Steve Summers 80. Um, I get into a lot of stuff there and usually post every day if I can. So some of you may be interested in that. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.